Hey, what's up? Welcome to another upbeat Q&A. This time we have a question from that old bloke from Tipton, where he asks, I'm nice and easy with my practice swing, but then tense up and swing like the Tin Man for my shot. Help! So first, you're not alone. A lot of us have this problem. This pops up for me every so often too. So thank you for the question because thinking about this in more depth, I'm sure is gonna help me in the future too. So I appreciate that. And so the easy first answer to why the practice swing is smooth and the full swing is not is stakes, right? There's no stakes when it comes to the practice swing. You can get it wrong, you can do whatever, and it really doesn't matter that much. Whereas with the full swing, you know, as we're standing here and we're thinking, oh, I gotta, I gotta hit this ball perfectly. It's gotta go right there and this gotta happen. I gotta make sure my arm's straight and my like hand, my grip is correct. All these other things that are coming in, you're gonna spend A, longer over the ball, which is gonna get you to tense up. But B, now there's stakes. If you mess up, problems happen. You might have a bad score. You might lose the hole. You might have a bad day, whatever your expectations might be. And so an easy answer to that is just be like, well, have fewer expectations. Yes, <laughs> that, that'll work. But I think there's a more nuanced and better answer to this. So first, disclaimer here, I haven't seen your swing, so I don't know where the issues are. This is just my guess at what where the various issues are for most folks. So hopefully some of this fits you and for everybody else watching, hopefully some of these things fit wherever your swing's at. But the first thing when I think about, you know, one swing is different to the other, I like to think about why. And starting with, when it comes to the practice swing, there's really only one purpose of a practice swing for a lot of people, and that's to make it just smooth. I know for me, sometimes when I'm like really caught up in a round or I'm thinking about something else, I'm really focused on my target. I'm not really deliberate about my practice swing at all. I don't really know what's happening. I'm just moving the club. And this happens a lot, especially when I'm putting, where, you know, I'm just looking at the hole and I'm just moving my hands. It's not even the right speed or the right distance or whatever. Just it's a habit that I've built in. It's not necessarily a good habit. So I think that's step one, which is the practice swing usually only has one goal versus the full swing has several goals. When it comes to the full swing, you have a full on mental checklist usually, right? So at the very least, you probably have a checklist about setting your feet up properly, setting the club up properly, ball position, hand position, all the basic grip, that kind of stuff. But for most of us, we tend to have more stuff. Like maybe you're trying to keep your left arm straight. Maybe you're trying to keep your weight on your right side a little more. Maybe, you know, a lot of us have dynamic swing thoughts too, which are not great, but we do have them. So it's like, okay, make sure your head stays behind the ball and like, I don't wanna take the club back too far. All those other things pop up too. So those goals, right, with the full swing don't exist when it comes to the practice swing. And so the practice swing, we're usually like, oh, I wanna hit the ball over there and it's gonna to come to here and then I'm gonna come through. The other thing that's really interesting is the success rate of the practice swing is 100% because you literally can't get it wrong. There's no ball, there's no way to measure it. And so you, we think that the practice swings are always great. We're like, oh yeah, I just wanted to get, that's it. That's kind of what I want to feel. I want to feel the club moving like that. Yeah, that's perfect. Now you could be an inch off your practice swing, the location, wherever you're trying to hit it. You ever tried like just hitting the ground, you're like, oh, I'm gonna hit this spot right here and then you miss it by whatever, half an inch, an inch, two inches, four inches, and you're like, oh, I'll just do that again. Okay, fine. And then you might miss it again. You're like, doesn't matter. I'm gonna hit the ball. It's gonna be fine. I, I do that a lot and it, it's not, it's usually not fine. But that's, that's kind of the thing that we do with our practice swing is we give it so much leeway to be okay that of course it's, you know, there's very few requirements for this. It's like taking a test where you only have to get one out of 50 questions right. And then you're like, yeah, that's good to go. And if you don't get that one right, they're like, mm, you seem like a nice guy. It's okay, no problem. Versus when it comes to this thing, we're usually not happy if we get, you know, 89 out of 100 questions right. We're like, if we got a couple of those questions wrong, this ball's going definitely not the way that we wanted it to go. We're like, oh no. That was one thing, you know, the face was just open a little too much at impact and that's where that's where the ball went. Oh my God, it's so terrible. And the reason I say all that is, maybe it's not the full swing's fault that we're tensing up with the full swing. Maybe it's that the practice swing doesn't prepare us adequately enough so that when we get to the full swing, we're all set to go and we don't have to go through like an 85 piece mental checklist or something else, right? If your goal is only just to look at tempo with your practice swing, then your full swing's definitely gonna be different. No target, all these other reasons. So anyway, main point, the practice swing and the full swing are usually executed very differently. Okay, so we got some possible causes. Let's talk a little bit about potential fixes for these issues. So the first one, I guess you could kind of guess that from what we just discussed, is make the practice swing a little bit more accurate, a little bit closer to the full swing, so you have a good idea of what the swing should feel like. And that the way I generally tend to think of this, I've made a couple other videos about this, where I talk about the think box, the feel box, and the play box. The practice swing happens in the feel box, and the whole point of the feel box is you wanna feel what the shot is gonna be like, not just, you know, only your tempo, but maybe something a little bit more detailed. Like, for example, if you're trying to hit, you know, like a low shot, maybe you're feeling like, okay, the ball's a little bit farther back in my stance, I'm gonna kinda of cover it more as I hit it. 
And so what this means is we put a slightly higher burden on the practice swing, which really doesn't have like a downside. There's no real like hard outcome because you can't really mess it up. Because like we said, there's a lot of leeway when you're not hitting a ball and you can take a couple more of them. But maybe feeling more than one thing, like good tempo, but also the way that the club head is going to interact with the ground. That helps build that feel so you don't have to focus a ton on it when you get up to the ball. Another thing you could just try when you're at the range is make a couple of practice swings, you know, see how they feel. And then just walk up to the ball and without thinking too much, just set up and then just hit it. And if you hit a great shot, maybe you're Matt Jones. <laughs> I don't know if you've watched him play, but he basically takes his practice swings. He doesn't even put the club down. He gets real close, club here and then go. And he's a professional golfer, we know his name. So it works for some people. Maybe something to experiment with, maybe that's you. Maybe the whole concept of standing over the ball going through a mental checklist is causing you problems. And so that's actually the next point is to reduce the mental checklist when it comes to standing over the ball. So personally, I think of the mental checklist when you're standing over the ball is like kind of two things. One is a solid setup, whatever it might be, right? So for me, it's pretty straightforward. It's, you know, I have a target line already from behind. I know which way I want the club to be aligned. I set that up, I set my feet up, set my body up, I'm good to go. So that's part one, which is like a strong setup. And then part two is whatever that one swing thought that I have that I want to execute on. So for me these days, it's that straight left arm. It's basically all I think about. So as I take away, I'm going to have a straight left arm and that's all that needs to be done. So, and you know, I might miss that by a little bit left or right. doesn't really matter. But at the end of the day, I'm not tense when I'm standing over the ball because I haven't given myself enough time to really get tense. For a lot of people with mental checklists, as you stand over the ball, I think there was a study at some point where like, you don't want to stand over the ball for more than eight seconds. That's a good number. I mean, someone should tell Patrick Cantlay and Brian Harmon that. But hey, no shade. I mean, we know their names, they don't know mine. So clearly something that they're doing is working. But I think for most of us amateurs, one thing we have to watch out for, since we're not spending all day every day hitting golf balls, is as you stand over the ball for longer and longer, everything starts getting more kind of rooted and tense. And we want some things to be rooted. Like for me, I want like a strong stance. I want like strong legs as I'm getting into the ball but I don't want everything to be tense because tight muscles don't move as fast as loose muscles. And so while my legs need to be strong to support my, my full turn and kind of like help me push into the ground, I don't want them to be so tight that I can't move. And the longer you stand over the ball, the tighter everything's gonna get. You also tend to crouch a little bit. I've noticed for myself, the longer I stand over the ball, I'm no longer kind of tall as I, my body just kind of gets a little bit tired and I start crouching, my knees come down a little bit. Now I'm starting to swing around my body. It just doesn't work. So that's a very long, justification for my request of cutting down on your mental checklist as you're standing over the ball. And I'll say one last thing about the practice swings that I think is important. So obviously we want to make it as close as possible to what we're trying to do. But the other thing that I think is really valuable is to make the practice swing behind the ball, not necessarily right next to it. I've seen a lot of people, I've a lot of people I play with on a regular basis where they get up, they set up, they stand here, they make their practice swings here. And you know, it kind of gives you a nice feeling because you're doing this. But then when you set up, Often you're not aligned correctly and you'll notice just automatically I kind of set up to the right, uh, which actually over to the blue line, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but I'm set up to the right because as you come in from the side, you're not going to get a good view of where your, where your shot is or where your target line is. So just doing these practice swings from behind the way the tiger does them, at least from what I've heard, you know, he takes a swing, looks at the target, takes another swing, looks at the target. And so that's also connecting to his mind, his, his athleticism, that, hey, this ball is going over there. So I think that's another kind of core thing to do with the practice swing. So that leads us to three key points, which is one, make your practice swing a little bit more accurate versus your full swing. Two, try to do your practice swing in the field box behind the ball, ideally not next to the ball. And then three, when it comes to the full swing, whenever you're ready to do it, cut down on the various kind of mental checklist items you have. So maybe like the one or two most important ones, ideally just one after your setup. So your setup's important. I also suggest doing this in like less than 10 seconds. If it takes more than 10 seconds, you're starting to get more kind of stuck over the ball versus I want to be moving in that direction towards wherever my target is. Uh, and Mike Malaska has a good video on this. He talks about how his old instructor used to approach the ball kind of from the side and behind and was always kind of behind the ball as he was hitting it. And I mean, he was an instructor, very good. So. It definitely works to kind of be a little bit more behind the ball. I think the more that we get stuck over the ball, that was a duff, but hey, not too bad. Uh, so 
But I think what happens is as we kind of get stuck over the ball, we get more and more down here. For me, what I've noticed is my head tends to move past the ball and I end up kind of hacking down on it kind of here instead of being able to swing through the ball a little bit better. So part number three there is with your full swing, cut down that mental checklist so you're not stuck over it so much. So hopefully, oh, and then the final thing, part number four, which I'll apply to literally every, every message that we'll, that we'll ever talk about. It's on my head cover. It's really that important. Keep breathing. One of the ways that we tense up is when we stop breathing. You ever watch a movie and you get scared? What's well, the first thing that happens? Everybody goes, <gasps> right? And now you're tense. And then when you relax, you go, <sighs> and now you're not so tense. So I think if you keep breathing as you get over the ball, you know, some, some players, what they do is back here, they might go <sighs> kind of let it out back here. Other people might do it when you're over the ball. I would just suggest when you're here and you're thinking through all that stuff, just make sure you're still breathing. So, you know, nice and easy. <sighs> Maybe you're breathing more deliberately. That's cool too. And hopefully it'll help. My hands are super sweaty, so I'm not gonna swing right now. I'll throw that club at the wall. <laughs> But anyway, I hope this is helpful. Please let me know what you think. If you have more questions, chuck them in the chat and comments below and uh, we'll go from there. So nice to see you. Catch you next time. Bye.